I'm Jamal Corner. I'm going to be facilitating today's information session about the reopening of our schools. Please note that at the end of the session, we will respond to questions you post in the Q&A form. So we encourage you to submit those questions throughout the presentation. I'd like to remind our speakers to speak slowly as today's session is being translated simultaneously. This information session is also being recorded and will be made available on the district website in both English and Spanish. Uh, and once again, to view the presentation in Spanish, please use the link posted in the chat. At this time, we're going to go over those instructions one more time in Spanish. Un recordatorio para ver la presentación en español, use el enlace publicado en el chat. Y para escuchar la presentación en español, haga clic en interpretación para las opciones de audio. All right, thank you very much. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to our superintendent, Dr. Crossway. He's going to say a few words. Dr. Crossway. Thank you, Mr. Corner. First and foremost, I hope that you, your family, and your loved ones are all doing well. Secondly, I'd like to take this time on behalf of our school board to welcome you and thank you for joining us today to learn more about our TK through sixth grade reopening plans. We are excited to provide these options and to welcome back our students. I know that there are a lot of questions and today we will do our best to answer as many as we can. We will also have multiple opportunities for you to share your concerns and direct questions to us. Today, we will provide you with a summary of the reopening plans and we will have a question and answer session at the end of this meeting. Everything that we do in Linwood Unified prioritizes the health and safety of our students, our teachers, our staff, and the community. And that is at the forefront of every decision that we make. Before we continue, I'd like to introduce our newest board member, Dr. Alma Castro, to say a few words. Dr. Castro. Good morning, Linwood community, Linwood Unified School District community. Dr. Kreswick, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, again, we welcome you and we thank you for uh, being part of this important conversation. As we continue to plan and collaborate on a safe reopening of our schools, we know that your voice is important and integral to the decision making process. So we invite you, as Dr. Crossway um, indicated, to continue to ask questions, reach out to us, and um, share information about our schools on reopening, on a safe reopening. We are excited to um, have reopened uh, two of our schools in the past weeks, and we're working hard to ensure that we are safe and prepared to reopen um, our other elementary schools in the upcoming weeks. Again, we thank you for being here with us this morning and sharing your concerns, and we look forward to ongoing conversations. Gracias nuevamente por estar con nosotros y estamos trabajando arduamente en colaboración con nuestro distrito para asegurar que nuestros planteles est, eh, sean reabiertos en una manera segura para todos nuestros alumnos, familias y empleados. Gracias por estar con nosotros esta mañana. Thank you so much, Dr. Castro, and thank you for joining us and making yourself available for this presentation. As a reminder, during the presentation, please submit your questions using the Q&A function on Zoom. And, and with that, are, are we doing, I'm gonna pass it over to Mr. Fromm, our Chief Business Officer, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Crossway. First, we're going to highlight the health and safety protocols we've implemented in our schools, beginning in the classroom. First and foremost, our reopening plans are aligned with the health standards set by the California Department of Public Health, the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health. In the classroom, these standards, including keeping desks six feet apart, using hand sanitizer, and personal protective equipment in every classroom. 
students will not be seated face to face and will remain in the same cohort groups. Students will not be allowed to share school supplies or other materials as well. We also have specific protocols for restroom use and cleaning. Students, student restrooms will be sanitized multiple times throughout the school day, including the morning, the mid-morning, and in the afternoon. These cleaning sessions will be followed by a complete sanitation of the restrooms at the end of the school day. Signs are posted in the bathrooms to ensure students maintain social distancing and the maximum capacity is two students at a time. Here we have a few other health and safety protocols that will be followed in Linwood Unified School campuses. Face masks are to be worn over the nose and mouth at all times when on campus. Schools will provide face masks to students or staff who need a face covering. Our custodial staff will conduct a thorough cleaning and disinfecting routine in all classrooms during the first recess break, lunch break, and after school. This will be followed by additional cleaning at the end of the school day. These intensive cleaning schedules are in place to ensure that all high touch common areas are clean and disinfected regularly. To ensure proper air ventilation, classroom doors will be open during instruction time and MERV 13 filters are scheduled to be installed in every classroom. Our students will follow protocols when entering and leaving campus to ensure proper management of movement within our schools. Students who are being dropped off will remain in their cars until they are fully screened. When entering the campus, students will enter through designated gates. Markers are placed across the campus, including sidewalks to ensure proper social distancing. Hand washing stations are placed at both entry points as well. When leaving the campus, students and parents will need to follow properly marked signs to ensure social distance is maintained at all times. Our recess and lunch breaks will also look different, allowing our students time outside of the classroom while following safety guidelines. All breaks will take place in designated areas with students adhering to social distancing guidelines. Playground equipment will not be available to use at this time. For lunch, our Think Together staff will distribute meals and students will eat in designated areas while social distancing will be maintained. Now I will turn it over to Dr. Dinkins. Thank you, Actually, Mr. Fromm. I'm going to yield to Dr. Crossway. Thank you, Dr. Dinkins. So at this time, I also just want to acknowledge one of our other board members who's joining us today is Mr. Gary Hardy. Thank you so much, Mr. Hardy, for joining us as well this morning. And and Mr. Corner, if we can go over again, the I know we had to, about 40 more people who just joined after we started. If we can go over the instructions once again on how to obtain the Spanish uh, translated version. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, to hear the presentation in Spanish, uh, you can follow the instructions on the screen. Uh, to view it in Spanish, I'm also going to post a link here in the chat. And at this time, we will also go over those instructions in Spanish. Claudia? Para ver la presentación en español, use el enlace publicado en el chat. Para escuchar la presentación en español, haga clic en interpretación para las opciones de audio. Thank you, Claudia. Okay. To further ensure the health and safety of our students and staff, health screenings will be required. Staff will take self-evaluations, including daily temperature checks. There will be two stations for visitor reception and an established sign, a sign and location to eliminate any crowds. Students will be screened as soon as they enter school and will be asked to wash their hands before proceeding to their designated areas. 
To assist our efforts in keeping our students and staff healthy and safe, we ask that parents assist with daily checklists before bringing students to school. Parents are asked to screen students for possible COVID-19 symptoms, which include a fever or new cough. We ask that parents call the school and inform the health technician if their child tests positive for COVID-19 or comes in contact with someone who tests positive for COVID-19. Please note the following situations and when to report to your school's health technician. Here we have an overview of the reopening dates for in-person instruction and distance learning. As a reminder, this is a fluid situation. As we continue to collect data from the community, we will continue to work on additional options to address your child's learning needs. We are working with families to offer five day support and minimize changing teachers. The following is a timetable of the hybrid schedule for students in cohorts A and B. Students in cohorts A and B will rotate from in-person instruction to asynchronous learning four days a week and asynchronous learning for both groups on Wednesday. Here is the afternoon portion of the hybrid instruction schedule. And here we have the return dates for our elementary schools. As you'll see, Helen Keller and Washington Elementary Schools began their return to campus on March 22nd. We anticipate the return of our students with special needs, K-6, during the week of April 15th and 19th. Please reach out to your school for more information. Lastly, I wanted to share the most recent results um, from our families about their instructional preferences for the remainder of the year. Um, together, these surveys were the results. These surveys were um, personally called by our school sites. This information is made up from 3,667 surveys with 44% of survey participants selecting they would prefer online learning, 35% selecting hybrid learning and 21% selecting in-person only, concluding that 56% of our survey participants selected some form of in-person learning. Thank you for your time today. And I'm gonna transition back to Jamal Corner. All right, thank you, Dr. Dinkins. I just wanna also thank our audience this morning for tuning into this presentation. At this time, we're gonna share some of the questions that you've submitted. I'm also going to remind you, I know we've had a lot of people join us this morning. Uh, at any time, you can submit your question there at the bottom in your Zoom function in the Q&A. Uh, leave it there and we'll, we will answer it. Um, before we begin, I'm going to remind you that if you have a complex or personal question, you can also email that uh, to meetingquestions at mylusd.org and we'll be answering that email at any time. So feel free to send that along. Let's go ahead here to the Q&A. Looks like one of our first questions. Uh, will standalone air purifiers be installed in each classroom? Uh, Mr. Fromm, maybe you wanna discuss what our classrooms will look like? Yes, Jamal. So we have purchased enough portable air filters uh, stations or units for each classroom that will have kids in it and and that um, so that is our goal. Thank you Mr. Fromm. And I see another question here. Uh, will bathrooms be supervised by someone to make sure they are clean? Mr. Fromm, you want to discuss that? Well the custodians have their times that they will go in and clean and that, um, and um, the supervisor, we have a nighttime operations supervisor that will, will be there as well to go over the work of the custodians at the end of the day. Thank you. And, and Mr. Corner, if I may just add to that, sure. is the other thing that we're doing for the elementary schools, for the bathrooms is we have someone stationed 
at the bathrooms. And we have a, a maximum number of students who can enter the restrooms. So by doing that is we're ensuring that students are able to keep their social, their physical distancing. And, and we have additional bodies who are able to monitor the bathrooms and check in on the cleanliness uh, throughout the day, as well as the scheduled cleaning times. Uh, and we're doing all that as an extra precaution because we want to make sure that our students, as they start coming back, they also are being trained on how to wear their mask how to keep their physical distance and, and how to you know, make sure that they're washing their hands properly and disinfecting on a regular basis. Perfect, thank you, Mr. Crossway. Uh, next question, when is Roosevelt Elementary opening day? If we wanted to, maybe we can share, reshare that, the schedule of our school Yeah, openings. Mr. Carter, I wanted to go back. Um, I can highlight that um, as we bring our grades on is to ensure best practices for health and safety. So K-2 will return April 15th and then grades three through six, April 22nd. And that's for all of the schools in the blue at the top, Marshall, Lincoln, Lugo, Roosevelt, and Twain. Perfect. Also wanna note that this schedule is, and all of this presentation is available on our website uh, under reopen plan. And we're also adding the Spanish version momentarily. So if you if you want to reference these dates, you can go to our website to view. Our next question. Is our schools going to have afternoon school programs? I'll take that, Jamal. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, in fact, um, we have partnered with Think Together, who will be doing social emotional learning, as well as physical activity, homework help, and enrichment um, from about two to three for some groups, and extended time on Wednesdays for others. So we won't have evening, but we will have afternoon. All right, thank you for that, Dr. Dinkins. We have another one follow-up question about this uh, PowerPoint, will it be provided? Uh, so yes, just to, to reiterate, yes, it will be. It will be available yes. on our website um, for your reference. Yes, um, it will. We're, we have to get it, um, continue to have it translated as we update it, yes. Absolutely. Next question, is there a limit of children per class? Dr. Dinkins, did you wanna discuss? Yes, there is. Per the CDC guidelines, it is recommended um, that we keep stable groups. Um, I thank everyone for their patience because since we planned the reopening, some of those guidelines have changed. However, we are keeping our stable groups at no more than 14 students with two supervising adults. And there will be exceptions to that as um, we have students who have one-on-one -on -one aids and we want to make accommodations that we don't go over in the 14. Thank you. Uh, will special needs classes be in person and will they have their same teacher? Dr. Dinkins. Thank you for the question. Uh, yes, we will be offering our special needs students their classes in person. Um, as I highlighted in the presentation, we are currently looking at options to be five days a week we also have um, collaboration with LTA. And so we are working to get those kids, um, those classes staffed with as minimal disruption as possible. All right. Uh, what will happen to students that only want online instruction? They have that option to stay. Online instruction will continue. Uh, what if cases begin to rise again? Dr. Crossway, would you like to take this question? Yes, thank you for, for that. So I, I wanna make sure that everyone is very clear. Our, our board has made the safety the, the number one priority for our district. They have pushed us to make sure that we are following the CDC, California Department of Ed, as well as LA County Department of, of Public Health guidelines. 
So as a district, we are fully committed to making sure that we follow all of our guidelines. But on top of that, we're being extra cautious. We're, we're not one of the first school districts to open in LA County. And you know, recently LA County and the state and the CDC said that six feet distancing is no longer necessary. We can now go to three feet. But as a district, we are still maintaining that six feet of distancing. And we're doing it because we wanna be extra cautious here. So absolutely, we are monitoring those numbers on a weekly basis, not only for the county, but for Linwood. And I'm glad that the LA County Department of Public Health recently started providing those figures by not only by uh, communities like Linwood, but also for school districts. So now we have access to those numbers that are broken down on a weekly basis. And as you know, today, LA County went from, you know, we've gone from the purple tier to the red tier, and now we are in the orange tier. So we have a little bit more flexibility. So absolutely, we will keep monitoring our numbers. You will keep monitoring those numbers. The public will keep monitoring those numbers. And trust me, our teachers and our staff, they're also looking at those numbers. So we got to always make sure that we're doing uh, what's right by the community. And I'm going to take this opportunity to also remind everyone is we have to continue being responsible. We all have to wear our face mask. We have to keep our distancing. We have to avoid congregating with other people who are not from our same house. Because I see things sometimes and it's, it's, it, it, it scares me and it worries me sometimes. The, the pandemic is not over. We are still in this pandemic and we need to make sure that we continue following all the safety protocols. And then the last thing I'm going to say is I encourage everyone to get vaccinated. I have two teenagers and as soon as it opens up on, this, um, on April 15th for them to be vaccinated 16 and up, I'm also in, you know, going to make sure that my kids are vaccinated at home. But it's really important that together we're able to make these differences. And, and I know Linwood City and as a school district, we, we have worked extremely hard to get testing available here in Linwood where you can just walk up to it, but also the vaccine. And, and on Monday, St. Francis did 1,000, uh, you know, over 1,000 vaccines. Linwood Unified has had the clinic at Fireball Mondays and Wednesday, and we're doing about 250 to 300 on each day. And I really want to see you there. I want to make sure that those are, are taking it, that the Linwood community takes advantage of those vaccines. So please spread the word. You know, as Mr. Corner said already, follow us on our, on our social media. We're posting that information there. Follow us on our, our district website. And if you need assistance, please reach out because I know sometimes making the appointments online is, is a little challenging for some of us, but we're here to help as well. So anything that we can do to continue helping you, we will continue doing that as well. So absolutely, we are following those numbers. A long, long answer to that question, but it's a, it's a great question that we all have a responsibility for that. So thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Crossway. Um, we just had another question about whether in-person was optional. Uh, so just to reiterate, yes, each family has the option to continue with online learning uh, or uh, attend in-person instruction. Um, let's see here. We have a question and a concern here about uh, teachers changing or students having to change a teacher uh this late in the school year um dr dinkins did you just want to discuss our efforts to address this yes yeah. um, as we um work continue to work with um our associations um as stated we are working on options to minimize that disruption um we will update you as soon as those options are finalized but we realize that that is a concern for our parents. We are strongly taking that into consideration as we work on the options for five days a week, which includes minimizing teacher changes. 
Okay. Do we have any pictures or video showing what it will look like with the new safety standards? Indeed we do. Dr. Crossway, would you like to touch on this? Yes, yeah, so where would they be able to find the, we do have video and we have pictures. And, and I know that our, our principals have also are scheduling the school visits. And as a matter of fact, yesterday there was a school visit in the morning and, and one in the late afternoon. And we had about 35 parents who showed up. And go ahead, Mr. Corner, I know you, you got that info. No, absolutely. Um, so yeah, for the two schools that have reopened, and that's Helen Keller and Washington, uh, both schools have released kind of informational uh, videos that go through their campus uh, and show you those new safety protocols. Um, so those will both be found on their uh, social media accounts, um, as well as on their websites. And uh, we'll be continuing to roll those out with all the schools kind of according to the schedule. Um, so as the as the reopening gets closer with each school, um, each school will be releasing uh, their own informational video that goes through those, those safety protocols. So, um, so look out for that um, for your, your individual school. And, and, and the principals and the school sites with their staff have been you know, working and putting in a lot of time to make sure that their schools are ready because it's not just about you know, distancing the desk. It's there's so many other things that go into preparing a school for the return of students. It's training staff. It's making sure that we have all of our equipment, supplies, and that people know what to do for different scenarios. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of questions. And I think that ultimately, as you start seeing more students return to campus, as you start seeing that people are going to be safe, we have had zero transmissions in our schools. And, and here's the thing is we have about 1700 employees in Linwood Unified. And at work here in the school district, we have not had a single transmission. And, and we've only been closed for about two weeks when the pandemic started. But after that, we've been open, you know, the entire school year. So we've been coming in in person. But again, we're following all the safety protocols. We're following the science. We're listening to the science and we know it works. Uh, when will the presentation for middle schools and high schools be? For the one room, we'll have more information on secondary. Dr. Dinkins, see you smiling there. I'm smiling because I'm really excited to have kids back on campus. It, it brings me joy. Thank you, families. Um, we are, um, we'll be discussing uh, secondary return um, in, in the guidelines of CDC. Um, as I said, they're changing as we move from the safety tiers, uh, purple, red, yellow, and orange. And therefore, um, after spring break, we will collaborate with our associations on the possible return of our secondary kids. We will keep you posted and conduct another webinar such as this to make sure you have all of those updates. Okay. Can we elaborate a little more on the hybrid schedule and in-person schedule? Dr. Dinkins, maybe if we want to revisit that, maybe if we want to put that slide. Sure. If we can go back to the slide, that would be helpful. I think it's slide number 11. Is someone gonna, oh, can we, can we go back to that slide please with the schedule, the hybrid learning schedule? So um, in the initial construction of this, this timeline, knowing that we have the limitation of only 14 kids in person, the original idea was for group A, um, to come Monday, Tuesday, group B come Thursday, Friday, and Wednesday be asynchronous. Along with our community input, we realize that that limits families to only two days a week in person and three days independently. So that is why we are working on the option for kids to be in person um, the entire week. 
Um, we, I have almost all the details and we will update the community and share them as soon as they're final. Um, we have partnered with Think Together and we do have um, certificated subs who have been in our Linwood district for a long time assisting us with making these plans come to fruition. All right, Is thank there you. a specific question about the hybrid schedule? I'm not sure of the question. Um, I hope that was sufficient. So yeah, feel free. I think the that particular question was anonymous. Uh, so feel free to follow up if you have if you want more um, clarification there, or you can also email us as well at uh, meetingquestions at myousd.org. We have a question: uh, Why the change so late in the year? Uh, so why did we decide to to reopen um, at this stage? Dr. Crossway, would you like to address this? Yeah, it's never too late to be able to continue providing additional options for our students and our families. And as Dr. Dinkins indicated, we had thousands of families who have been reaching out and have been on a wait list asking and, and knocking on doors, um, almost begging us to provide some additional in-person support. And, and I want you to know that I've, you know, I've, I've heard from some families and some families who don't have a lot of options in terms of childcare. They have to go back to work and they have little ones at home and, and they've been buying the baby monitor cameras because they, they gotta leave their children at home. And so we're, we're doing the best that we can in collaboration with you as a community, in collaboration with our associations, all of our employees to make sure that we provide you with options. And again, I'll share this information with you. LA County has 80 school districts. 40 of them have already opened up. Uh, the other 20, I'm sorry, 40 of them opened up by mid-March. The Another 20, so 60 out of the 80 by the last week of March. And so we have another 20, which includes Linwood Unified, that either have plans to uh, continue reopening in April or after spring break, and so we want to continue providing families mm -hmm. with these options. Some students have thrived with the online environment, but many have struggled uh, socially, emotionally, physically. They're not moving around, you know, and, and staying active, but also academically. And we we need to continue supporting all of our students as as best as we can, given the different circumstances. And again. You know, we, we, the wait lists are there. So we want to make sure that this is a viable option for those families who need it. If this is not something that you're ready to do, we respect that. We're okay with that. We're not pushing you to send your child to school, but we definitely want to provide our students and families with those options. We had a soccer game yesterday at Lewin High School, and, and it's just great to see the students to be able to come out of their homes, to interact with each other, and to do these things in a safe manner. So we're gonna continue providing that support and, and doing it in a safe and, and effective manner. All right, thank you. Questioning, how many custodians are there in the schools to clean the classes? Mr. Fromm, would you like to discuss custodians? Yeah, I don't know the exact amount at each site, but I do know that we're going to be adding one more to each site to help support the additional needs. We have custodians that come in uh, to start the start the day, then we have some that come in midday, and we also have night crews as well. And we also have support from our NOSs, which are considered, which are called our nighttime operations supervisors, which help support the schools as well and the custodians on the sites. All right, thank you. How is the testing and accepting process for students affect attendance? Dr. Dinkins? Yes, I, I'm understanding that question to mean that if a child has positive or um, COVID symptoms that you are concerned about the attendance. You know, I know that attendance is super important to us here in Linwood because we know we need our children to learn. But for the safety of all, if your child is ill, it is best that child stays home. Now, should the state give us waivers 
on attendance. Uh, we will work with families for it not to be a negative thing as students can still have some asynchronous work at home. Um, so um, as we work through those attendance issues with the state, I don't want you to be concerned that it would be a punitive thing. Um, what's most important is safety. So uh, we'll continue to follow the guidelines. We'll continue to update on attendance. We do have a provision in the law right now that allows us to count asynchronous attendance. So uh, moms and dads and grandmas and uncles, it, it's not punitive. It's all about safety and the health of all of our families and students. All right, thank you. Also just wanna remind the audience, um, we have a lot of questions this morning. It's a pretty big group. Uh, so we'll get to them as quickly as we can. Uh, please be patient with us. Um, I also see a few emailed already to our meeting questions email, which is awesome. Um, and so we'll respond to those as well. Uh, I'll read a few from there and then we'll respond uh, via e email. So we appreciate your patience with that. Um, how would we know if our child is going back to school? Um, so just to reiterate, um, coming back for in-person instruction is optional for each family. Um, and we do have a, a schedule for our reopening uh, for all of our elementaries here. Anything you wanna add to that, Dr. Dinkins? Uh, yes, um, we started with the with the students or parents, excuse me, that responded to the survey. But even those that didn't, um, the school sites have been asked to make calls. Have you not, have you have not been contacted? Your principals are on the line. Please contact your school's principal and, and let them know of your interest. All right, thank you. Are there enough teachers and classes for students? Dinkins. Yes, um, part and part of the development of that hybrid schedule is because we are not allowed at this time for where we are in the tier to have everyone back at school at the same time. So even while working on plans to extend the in-person above and beyond two days, we still have to stay within those guidelines. And we know that it's not a choice for everyone. So at this time, not all kids will be on campus at the same time. And um, we are still working on that for our secondary and how that will look. Okay. Uh, someone said that they heard the hybrid schedule will no longer be followed. Is this accurate? Dr. Dinkins? No, no we, have an, um, we have an agreement with our associations. So um, there will be exceptions as we collaborate to offer those options for five days, um, but there will be multiple options for families, including the hybrid schedule. Okay, uh, I'll give you a two part here. If I don't want my child to go back to school, uh, whom would I talk to? And for students doing online, are they going to keep the same teacher? Uh, oh, sure. <laughs> I was waiting. Sorry. Um, if you want your child to stay online, that is not a problem. Again, we're working very diligently to minimize any disruptions at this time. Yes, the teacher will remain the same, um, but we also base those things on student need and, and family need as it comes to whether it's in person, online, or the um, optional five days. But we are working diligently to not have disruptions to teacher assignments. Okay, when do we get the schedule for our kids to return to school? Uh, so just a reminder, we do have a, a reopening schedule for our K through six. That's a part of this presentation. Yes. Um, we're gonna put that slide up right now for you. One and more slide. Yeah, go back a little bit, guys. And it's also available on our website. Uh, yes. It will be in English and Spanish. Uh, momentarily. So thank you for that. Um, when will special needs students return? The week of April 15th and the week and April 19th. All right, thank you. Um, question and concern. Why are you guys making it mandatory that kids stay until three? They aren't going to be with their primary teacher. We should have the option if we want our kids to take part in an after school. 
program. Any response to that, Dr. Dinkin? Well, yes, I understand that concern and thank you. Um, but however, right now, in order for stable groups, um, we are not allowed to mix. So I can work with our partners for some other options, but in keeping stable groups, the, it has to be the same kids together from eight to three, meaning that if I have 14 in a class, I can't go above the 14 and I cannot commingle students that are not in a certain stable group. I hope that makes sense. I appreciate wanting that option um, after school for those who are not in a stable group. And I will explore that with our partners. Thank you for that though. Dr. Dinkins, and, and maybe I misunderstood the question, but is the question, can parents bring their students to school or their children to school from the morning till, let's say one o'clock and then get picked up earlier? I, oh, oh is yes. Is that an option? That's not yeah. an option, but I understood it as they want to be in the afternoon group without being there in the day. Maybe I misunderstood the question. Okay. Uh, we have a question just about uh, monitoring the cleaning of the bathrooms, et cetera, at each school. So Mr. Fromm, if you just wanted to maybe discuss that a bit once more. Yeah, I think we already just, we talked about that here. Um, so as in presentation slide, uh, we have the times that they will be cleaned. Um, and we also ha will have a staff person outside the doors as well, uh, watching the students going in and out. All right, thank you. Um, how will students be physically, or excuse me, how will physical distancing be maintained throughout the day? And will kids be going outside to the playground? Mr. Fromm, did you wanna discuss this? Yeah, Jamal, can you pull that slide back up again where we discussed that, that they'll be going out, but they will not be able to use the playground equipment um, and at all times they will practice uh, and maintain the proper social distancing. Okay, perfect. I'll go ahead and move on to the next question as we pull up that slide. Um, I think we addressed this, but I'll, we'll go over it again. Um, is there a planned start for middle school uh, or high school? Dr. Dinkins. We, we have to collaborate. We definitely want our secondaries back in some form, but we have to collaborate with our associations. We will update you and hold a similar webinar on that issue. All right, thank you. How will the Think Together groups work, Dr. Dinkins? Sure, so the Think Together groups work in the same manner that the stable cohort groups work. So if I have a class, I'm teacher A, um, when they go out for recess, lunch, and in the afternoon, those groups stay together. So they do not commingle with another group. And so Think Together basically just takes that stable cohort and they do those activities such as social emotional learning, some form of physical activity that does not require kids being um, not social distance, homework help, enrichment. But the stable groups stay together all day. Thank you. How do we sign up our child if we want to return to school? Dr. Dinkins? No problem. Please contact your school and let them know that you are interested in having your child attend in-person instruction. Thank you. And just to reiterate, because I see a couple other questions about it, um, in-person uh, is optional for each family, uh, as is distance learning. So if you want to keep your child in distance learning, you have that option as well. Uh, will all schools have the same schedules? Yes. If you are online, uh, of course, there's not the afternoon portion, um, but if you aren't, but this hybrid schedule that is here on the screen is the schedule for all students at each elementary school. Perfect. And because I see a, a bunch of other questions about scheduling, 
uh, how long will the day be in recess and lunch. Um, this presentation will be available uh, on our website, uh, mylusd.org, uh, in both English and Spanish. It's pretty short, um, so you are welcome to reference that at any time. Uh, will teachers and school staff be vaccinated for COVID? Um, Dr. Lucas here, did he want to uh, just address our, our efforts to uh, vaccinate our, our staff? Sure, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Corner. So there is no mandate in the state of California for vaccination. So um, we are encouraging, strongly encouraging all of our employees to be vaccinated. We have established uh, a clinic that is uh, focusing on our employees and giving those appointments uh, to them uh, every single week to make sure that uh, they are vaccinated. All right, thank you. Um, if we have more than one student, can school accommodate for the same group, either A or B, for both students? Example, a first grade and a third grade. So I guess they're asking if their first grader and third grader can both be a part of the same uh, group schedule. So right now, the stable groups are by grade level. Right. So, um, but to answer that question, because um, I think the concern is them not being in two different groups. So the first, if the whatever the family feels is best for them, if the sibling is in a group A, we will accommodate their sibling being in group A as well. I think I hope I answered that. The, not in the same group as far as mixed grades, but in the same cohort. Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, can in-person promotions and graduations be considered? Uh, they can also be arranged in small groups, just like in-class learning. So I think they're wondering if we'll be considering uh, those promotional ceremonies down the line. Dr. Dr. Crossway wants this one. I want it too, but I'm a yield to Dr. Crossway. I'm so excited. Take a sip of, <laughs> take a sip of water, Dr. Jenkins. <laughs> yes, we... We are very, very excited that this year, the LA County Department of Public Health has given schools some flexibility to provide some in-person uh, events and activities. So as you know, uh, we've opened up to sports already. And because we, we've gone from the purple tier to the red and now the orange tier, um, in the red tier, we had the flexibility to bring back 25% of students at a time for an activity. And, and now moving into the orange tier, we can bring back 33% of students at a time. So the, the LA County is still giving us some, some tighter guidelines on what that will look like, some parameters, mm -hmm. but we are working closely with them to make sure that we have in-person opportunities for the graduations. So what it looks like right now, based on what we've learned so far, is that we will be able to accommodate 33% of the students at a time. And of course, they're gonna to have to wear their face mask, keep their distancing, and, and we're gonna have reduced family members who will be able to attend the ceremony as well. So it, it may mean we have three ceremonies at the high school uh, for that graduation. It may mean that the ceremony, instead of being a two hour ceremony is six hours, but just stay tuned and we'll be sharing that information and also getting input from our students. But I met with high school students a couple of weeks ago and I asked them, you know, what would you want for your graduation? And all of them said the same thing, no virtual ceremony. They do not want that at all. So I'm happy that the county will be able to give us additional information or, uh, you know, flexibility for that. And so we, we've been working on that for a few months as well. All right, that's great news. We have a bunch of teacher related questions here. Um, one is, will all the teachers return? And the next is, uh, if my son daughter goes back to in-person learning, will they keep the same teacher? Um, and also a question about, Will students be with their actual teachers or only teacher aides? Dr. Martinez, did you want to 
address some of these teacher related questions? Um, good morning, everyone. I'm not sure. Maybe Dr. Lucas can help with that or Dr. Dinkins. Is that okay? Of course. I'll take other questions. Sure. So I'll jump in real quick, Dr. Lucas. Um, as I stated earlier, we are um, working um, to develop other options outside of the hybrid schedule to support families with more in-person instruction. Um, we do have an understanding with our associations on um, who returns when, and we will abide by that. Um, however, we are also working to minimize those disruptions as best we can. I think there was a second part of that question. No, we will not have um, students in class with just AIDS. There will be certificated supervision um, in the form of a guest teacher or their actual teacher as we continue to collaborate and work those details out. All right, thank you. Uh, someone has a, a question about uh, students wearing masks for a long period of time, uh, how we'll go about uh, enforcing that and so forth. Uh, Mr. Fromm or Dr. Dinkins, would you like to address this? Yeah, Jamal, I can address that. If you can go back to that slide, um, masks are required uh, the entire time staff and students are on school grounds. Uh, they must be worn over the nose and mouth uh, and closed at the chin area. And that um, obviously when they're eating their lunches, they'll be able to pull it down and when drinking water, they will. But all, all their times, their mask needs to be on. All right, thank you for that. Let me scroll here. Uh, question about uniforms. Will students have to wear uniforms? Um, that is a great question. And you know, um, as I stated earlier, we are more concerned with the health, safety, and academic, and social, emotional needs of our students. We would never um, um, stop a family or a student from attending school because of a uniform. So we will work with you if, if wearing the uniform is an issue, but it's definitely not a prerequisite to come back to in-person. We want you here. So we will work with you. Okay. Will online instruction be an option for this school year only or also for the fall of 21-22? Yes, we are, we are planning to keep online instruction as an option. With the hope, however, as we move through the tiers and um, more people um, take advantage of vaccination opportunities that we will be able to have more students in person, but we definitely are planning to keep our online options open for the 21-22 school year. More information about that um, around about July as we are in the midst of summer school. Okay. Will teachers be allowed to return to the classroom or will it be a separate program? Maybe you just wanna address teachers returning to the classroom? For our in-person option, yes. Um, yeah. Online, they have an option to work from the classroom or from home. All right, thank you. Um, another question about how many days a week students will be attending school. If we want to briefly address that again. Currently in the um, schedule, there's a cohort A and B um, alternating two days in person and three days not. However, we realize from input from the community that that doesn't work for everyone. So we are working on options um, for five days and we will share those options as soon as they're finalized. Okay. Let's see here. I know things are fluid, but has LUSD planned for reopening in 2021-2022? Um, if so, can we ensure all stakeholders are part of the discussion and input? Dr. Crossway, would you like to address this? Sure, so uh, for now, 
we're we're still following the guidelines and again you know these things continue to change but as more people get vaccinated and we move away from the higher rates of infection, we're hoping that we'll have more options to bring more students uh, to in-person support. And I would keep my fingers crossed that we're able to be done with this by the end of the summer. But realistically, we are planning for some distance learning for the fall. And we are planning for you know either a hybrid approach or being able to provide other students with with other options as well but at this point it, it's I, if i had a, a crystal ball where i could look into the future i can give you a better answer but again these the numbers are changing so you know like i heard this week that by may uh, about 50 percent of people in the u.s will be vaccinated and, and those are great numbers because it's it's it wasn't anticipated a few months ago and so you know, I, I, I'm, I'm staying hopeful that we'll have more flexibility for the fall, but we are planning to continue with the distance learning options as well. Thank you. We're getting quite a few questions about uh, the plan for TK transitional kindergarten. Oh, yes. Um, we are forming those classes based on um, need. Um, there are nine classes across the district, and we want to ensure that we're able to meet all parents' needs. So please reach out to your principals, inform them that you wanna bring your TK student back and we will work with you on that. All right, thank you. Will there be class on Wednesdays, which is typically a free day? And <laughs> if, if my daughter is in group B, who will provide instruction? So on the Wednesday asynchronous day, um, our contingent plans is to have some certificated supervision for those students who need that extended help. Um, you can get more details from the principal, but we will have some help for students so that they're not completely independent the entire day. Thank you. If I decided for my child to go back for in-school instruction, but now hybrid instruction fits our needs best. Can I switch it or is it too late? Um, I never wanna say no to anyone. Um, however, just keep in mind, we do have stable groups of 14. And so if they're already in a class, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, so let your principal know that you would like to switch. Um, just keep in mind, that after spring break, we have about 50 days left of school. So I wouldn't want your child to miss any opportunities. Um, uh, so please let your principal know as soon as you can um, once spring break is over. But thank you, great question. Can we talk a bit about our staggered schedule? We have questions about why there are gaps uh, between schools reopening. Um, you know, in order to align best practices for health and safety, we started with the benchmark volunteer schools of um, Washington and Helen Keller. Um, one of the reasons for the staggered start is ensuring that all of those health and safety measures as detailed in the um, presentation by Mr. Fromm are in place. Um, as you can imagine, trying to do that for all 12 schools at one time was not efficient. And so to ensure that those health and safety things are there, that all the staff that is needed to keep the school clean, safe, and sanitized are in place, we needed to stagger the schedule to give um, those operational pieces more time, sufficient time to make sure that everything is done to a level of excellence. Thank you. Uh, we have a specific question about uh, Lincoln being ready for reopening. Uh, and the preparation. So maybe we could just talk, um, Mr. Fromm, about some of the preparations we've done at, at our different school sites. Yeah, all, all the school sites are getting the same work preparation being done at those, their sites where the um, desks in the classroom are distanced based on our six feet apart. Um, all the students' desks will have a plexiglass shield. We have hand sanitizer stations uh, throughout the school grounds, hand washing, 
stage uh, stations throughout the grounds as well, markings on the grounds for where to walk in and out. So all of our schools are set up with the same safety and health protocols that are required to open our schools up safely. All right, thank you. How will dropping off kids work to avoid morning crowds? Good question. So if you go back to the uh, slide on ingress and egress, which is entrance and exit. So um, when you work with your principals and you um, indicate your return to school, um, gates will be identified. There are markings on the ground for where students will stand. And um, we have uh, staff greeting um, parents at the gates as they drop off their kids because we must do temperature checks in a safe manner. But um, when you do your school tours, I wish I had a picture, I'm so sorry. When you do the school tours or when you watch the videos from Keller and Washington, you will see markings on the ground and clear signs of where to stand as we enter school and you will be given direction of where to stand as we exit the children from school. All right, thank you, Dr. Dinkins. Um, if, you, if you wouldn't mind just discussing our efforts to keep teacher uniformity, uh, once more, we have a lot of questions about uh, why kids will have to change teachers. Again, we're working really diligently not to change that, you know, but by CDC guidelines, because we had to have stable groups and um, being in a certain tier offer in-person instruction for those who wish for it, um, it caused some disruption in what our current schedule is. So we are diligently working to change that. Um, without some finalization, I'm not really able to discuss it more than that, other to, than to say we are working on options for that not to happen. Um, it's not completely unavoidable in some exceptional cases, but we have partnerships with Think Together as well as certificated guest teachers with long histories here in Linwood so that we can um, make sure that we address everyone's concerns and needs. Okay. Is the school year still ending in mid-June or is it being extended into the summer? Our last day of school is the same, but there will be extended summer school learning opportunities. Okay. What is the status for preschool opening? Our um, ECE is open right now. So if you wish to attend, um, you can call the ECE office. I would try to put that number in the chat and let them know that you're interested. Okay. Uh, will kids be able to bring their own lunch? and drink water bottles in class. Mr. Fromm, as you wanna address this? Or Dr. Dean. Um, I don't, I'm pretty sure they will be able to bring their own lunch and we have water bottle filter filling stations, a couple of them at each site as well. And I believe there's going to be water bottles for students that don't have water that they brought in as well to access that. So yes, but there will be no there will be no use of any of our drinking fountains. Um, those will all be closed down. Um, so you'll have the ability to bring your own water, bring your own bottle to fill up from the filling stations to uh, to drink throughout the day. Thank you. And to follow up, Mr. Fromm, we have a question about uh, visible cleaning logs. If you want to just discuss our our cleaning system in terms of our there there will be there will be logs that 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 track what was cleaned and also on each door of each classroom once the room has been cleaned there there will be a sticker on the door a seal um and signed off on that knows that um it has been cleaned so if a, a staff member would come back to their door and that seal is been broken that means someone has been in there since it's been been cleaned in that and so they would address that with the custodial staff there to make sure it's rechecked and cleaned. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see here, sorry. 
what safety measures or protocol will school staff follow in case there's a student or staff member diagnosed with COVID-19 uh, that has made contact potentially with other students and staff members? Will there be some type of contact tracing? Um, Dr. Lucas or? Dr. Martinez. Dr. Martinez. I can absolutely answer that one. So if there's been a student that has possible COVID-19 symptoms during the school day, they will be put in a student wellness isolation room and or tent and contact tracing will absolutely be done. Every school has been trained or will be trained before the start of students returning on how to conduct contact tracing. And there's protocols in place where parents, prior to students starting, parents will receive information on the documents they will receive if they have to quarantine or if they have to go to the doctor or what protocols to follow prior to the student returning to school if they have possible COVID exposure or if they have to quarantine. So parents will receive um, documents that will provide all that information and contact tracing will be notified and parents will be notified on the processes uh, they have to take prior to returning. Or if a student has been, um, if a student is in a classroom where another student possibly had COVID. So all the parties involved will be informed and processes will be explained prior to starting um, to in-person instruction. All right, thank you for that. We have a lot of scheduling questions. So I just wanna remind you that um, this presentation will be available on our website uh, at mylusd.org in both English and Spanish uh, to break down most of your scheduling questions. And we do appreciate your patience on answering our questions here. I know we have a lot. Um, and you are more than welcome to email them as well to meeting question, questions at mylusd.org uh, and we can uh, respond to those following this meeting. Will teachers be in person in classroom teaching? And will, or will students be in classrooms doing distance learning. Dr. Martinez or Dr. Dinkins? So for distance learning, teachers have the option of working in their classrooms or online. For in-person on-campus learning, teachers will be in the classrooms. I think if I understood that question correctly. Yes. I believe you answered it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have a question about our special ed uh, schedule. Um, will those students also be without their teacher for, for a portion of the day like other students? Um, as we work on those options, those um, options to expand past the two days include special needs students as well. Will kids need to get vaccinated in order to attend school? Dr. Crossway? Yes, no, they do not. And, and right now, most students are not able to get vaccinated. So right now the vaccine is only available for 16 and up. And again, that window opens up for them to register for that by, uh, and get vaccinated on April 15th. And, and there are studies already taking place with Pfizer and Moderna uh, for two to 15, I think it's six months for one of them and up. Um, but again, they have not been authorized nor approved. And so at this point, they do not need to be vaccinated, but they do need to wear a mask and we'll help them make sure that they learn how to use the mask properly, how to take it on and take it off. And, and I'll tell you is that when I've gone out to the Helen Keller in Washington, the students don't have any problems wearing the mask at school. No, they they may have a problem with you at home sometimes, <laughs> but when they're with us, not a problem. All the kids are wearing a mask, all the adults are wearing a mask. And, and when they do go outside, they get more breaks. And when they do go outside, we do also physically distance them. And at that point, if they bring a snack, they wanna have some water, they're physically distanced, and that's when they can remove their mask and, and take a sip, you know, have a snack, and, and they're perfectly fine 
Um, so just be mindful of that, that we're going to help train them and, and build their capacity so that they're better prepared in understanding how to use a mask and how to properly remove it and put it on. All right, thank you. Also just wanna remind you, I see a bunch of questions and comments um, that in-person instruction is not mandatory. Uh, it is optional uh, for each family that wants uh, and needs it. Correct. I have a son in eighth grade. Uh, he had to go to Linwood Middle, but it's under remodel. Where will they send him? So they're asking uh, where will the, their uh, LMS student attend? So as we work in the transition that we have with um, Linwood High School and Linwood Middle School, um, we are reviewing and examining um, Hostler for those from LMS who may wish to come back in person. But again, um, we have to still work with our associations before we can make final um, assessments on that. But we are confident that we will be able to accommodate those who wish to come back in person from LMS at Hostler. Okay. How can I confirm that my child can remain in online instruction? Uh, no need for confirmation. Um, when the school reaches out to you and um, asks you your choice, your option to remain online doesn't change. You don't need to fill out anything. You just log on every day as you normally have been doing right now. No changes if you did not request one. All right, thank you. Um, more questions about cleanliness, accountability, and the protocol. Uh, Mr. Fromm, if you wanted to touch on that. Jamal, can you put the slide back up, please? Sure. So we can just go over it again. So we will have our classrooms cleaned um, in mid-morning. Go one forward, please, Jamal. Um, we will have our restrooms cleaned in the morning, mid-morning, and afternoon. Um, in terms of the class, in terms of the classrooms, um, the the sanitizing of it will happen once the kids leave. Uh, but they will go in and clean up as well uh, on the mid breaks as well. But I just wanted to make a, a point reference here too. The most important thing we can do in our schools with our kids is make sure they wear and staff wear the mask because even though we are going to clean the classrooms, we're gonna clean the high touched areas. The science shows that it spreads throughout the air, right? So making sure that we all wearing our masks are very important. Maintaining our space, which is required is very important. Making sure we have good air ventilation in all classrooms as well. Those are gonna be the key things on top of the disinfecting. Mr. Uh, Corner, if I can make one brief uh, addition to that, in that we have uh, uh, arranged for additional personnel to be at the site. So that instead of just uh, the regular staffing for custodial, we have additional folks coming in to help out with the extra cleaning needs. Excellent, thank you. Uh, are schools that are under construction, will they be finished by the reopening date? Mr. Fromm, as you want yeah, to- Yeah, I can, I can talk to that. that um, no, um, those, what will happen is the times that work is being done will adjust. Um, we, we had the ability to work and get a lot of work done while the schools have been closed because students weren't, weren't there. So construction would happen during the school days. And so um, the, those will adjust to uh, have the work being done when schools aren't open with kids or kids aren't there. And, and then those areas where the construction is being done, they will be make, make sure that they're, they're fenced off or roped off so, so they uh, are safe and, and students can't access those areas. But that work would have been done if we were in person or not. It wasn't done based on the fact that the schools were, were closed. We just had the ability to get more of that work done while the schools were closed because of being able to work during the day. All right, thank you. Uh, will the district share if there's an outbreak or COVID cases in the opened 
campuses. Dr. Martinez, did you wanna discuss this? Sure, um, there are HIPAA laws and rules that we don't necessarily share outbreaks. It, if it does pertain to your particular child, if they are in a cohort, that if there is uh, more cases, um, you will be informed if a student has it in your cohort. But as Dr. Crossway said earlier, we have not had any outbreaks and we're hoping that we will continue to be safe. So we don't have outbreaks. But again, if your child is in a cohort where a student possibly has uh, COVID, you will be informed. So parents will be informed um, if it's directly impacting your child. Thank you for that. I may add something, Mr. Corner, is that as an as a entity, as a school district, we are also required to send this information to the LA County Department of Public Health. So if there were to be an outbreak, this becomes public information. And if there are three or more cases at a single location, it's gonna go on a website. But as Dr. Martinez said, you will not get information about a specific person, whether it be a child or an adult, but out of an abundance of caution and following the guidelines, we will make sure that you as a family are aware that you know, someone maybe has tested positive or has the symptoms. And, and then the extra precaution is we're gonna do the quarantine because again, we wanna make sure that we're able to contain it until we get clarification that no one has uh, tested positive and, and share that information. Anything else to add for that, Dr. Lucas? Sorry, no, sir, that said, it, 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 we will be reporting and then following all of the contract tracing guidelines of the county. Yeah, and then, you know, the other thing is, is as we're bringing back students, those of you who are bringing them back with this first group or first wave, you may have six students in a classroom. It, there might be 40 to 60 students in the entire school. And so you're going to have a lot of adults, a lot of attention on your child, and, and, and we're going to take care of your babies. We will make sure that they are safe. They're following all the protocols. We're gonna follow all the protocols. And again, our principals are here. They're here on this presentation and, and they have been working extremely hard yes, to get ready for this day. We have learned a lot from other districts and other states from our scientists. And we're using that information to guide how we're bringing back students. But see your principals give them a call. They're going to be sharing additional information with you, whether it be by pictures, a presentation, so that you can see what that school looks like. And, and ultimately, if you want to schedule an appointment to conduct a school visit, reach out to them so that you can personally see where your child is going to be. And, and again, this is a personal decision for, for everyone. It's, it's going to be different, and we're not judging you if you choose to send your child or you choose to keep them at home, that's your, that's your decision. We as a school district, what we are doing is working to give you as a family an option. So if you want the option of bringing, the, bringing them into class and, and getting that in-person support, we wanna be able to support you. If you're not ready to bring your child in person, that's okay too. We will respect that and support you as well. Ultimately, our job is to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to safely support the academic, the social, emotional, uh, and the personal development of, of our children. And we wanna just thank you for your patience, for your understanding. We know there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of information that continues to change, um, but you're here today and, and you're here with us trying to get the accurate information and we're presenting you with the information that we have available today. Next week, it may change again, but this is the information that we have as of March, what is it, the 31st? So we're, we're doing the best we can, but I also just wanna thank you for your support, for your patience, and for your understanding. And I know we all say this all the time, but we're gonna get through this together. And, and I wanna be able to look back on this and what we did to support you and your child and to know that we did the absolutely best that we could by your child. 
and it's difficult, it's challenging, but we're gonna continue doing what we can. All right, thank you, Dr. Crossway. And I think we're gonna take just a couple more questions here. We're running kind of toward the end of our, our session here. Uh, we do see all your questions um, and I see them being emailed as well to meeting questions at mylusd.org. So feel free to continue using that. Uh, and we'll respond um, well after the meeting. Um, there seems to still be a bit of confusion on the just the hybrid schedule options. Um, Dr. Dink, I don't know if you just want to touch on that uh, one more time. Um, we can go back to the hybrid schedule. That's not a problem. I, I think I think what would help is knowing that when we have the other options finalized, it will be helpful. So um, can you go to the beginning of that slide, please? So uh, if you look at across the top for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you have group A in person from eight to three. Um, Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday asynchronous for everyone, and then group B will come in person while the other group is asynchronous. And we realize that schedule may or may not work for some of our families, as many of you have reached out, and we're greatly appreciative of that feedback that it's hard for families to only have kids there two days. So as I discussed earlier, we're finalizing options to extend the schedule to be five days for students, um, but it's not final, but it will be shared as soon as I'm able. I hope that helps. Thank you, Dr. Dinkins. And then lastly, I saw a question in the chat about uh, students being screened as they arrive at school before yeah. going into the classroom. Uh, do we maybe just wanna talk quickly about that process? either Dr. Martinez? Yeah, I can talk about that. Yes, so students will be screened in two ways. One, if they are in car doing drive-through drop-off, they will remain in their vehicle and a staff member will approach the car and screen the student. And the screening would look like the temperature check. And once the student passes the temperature check, they will be allowed to get off and they will be escorted inside the campus by a staff member. The second option would be the walk-up for those parents that are walking students to campus. There will be a table and staff will screen students with a temperature check as well. And once that, and questions that they will ask them regarding um, certain symptoms, if they've been around, you know, the normal uh, fever or if they've been around someone with COVID. Um, so once that is screened and the student passes a temperature check, they will be escorted inside the campus um, to be allowed inside. And then once they go through the gates, they will wash their hands or hand sanitize their hands and then go to the directional of lineup, item, lineup areas for all the students. So they will be checked prior to entering campus. All right, thank you so much. And I think that's gonna bring us to the end of our presentation here today. I just wanna remind everybody, we're gonna put this presentation in both English and Spanish on our website uh, at mylusd.org. And you can also to continue to send your questions over to meeting questions at mylusd.org and we'll get those answered for you. And I'm gonna end it by directing it back to Dr. Crossway. We'll close this out, Dr. Crossway. Thank you, Mr. Corner. So again, I just wanna thank each and every one of you for joining us this morning and spending about an hour and a half with us. I hope you got some you know, answers to your questions, um, are, are feeling better about the options that we are providing as a school district. I wanna thank our school board for always pushing, to, pushing us as a staff to continue doing um, what's best for our kids and our families. And I also wanna just thank all of our principals, all of our staff who have been working incredibly uh, diligently to make sure that we're prepared to safely return and welcome back your students. And I wanna thank you again for joining us today, for, for listening to us, for giving us some good feedback in terms of what we can do differently for your questions. And just know that in our heart, we're doing everything that we can to support you. We love your children. We want the best for them. And, and our goal is to continue inspiring them to dream big and to have options beyond high school. And I also wanna thank our partners, uh, Think Together, who is on the, on, the, on the guest list as well, because we couldn't do this without them. 
I want to thank VMA for helping us organize this information session for you. And I uh, want to thank our translator who has been working nonstop. <laughs> Hopefully she got a little bit of water. Elizabeth Orozco, so muchas gracias. Thank you again, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the day. Again, if you have any other questions, here's the email. You're gonna you know, leave the meeting, you're gonna have more questions and that's perfectly normal. Uh, write this down, take a screenshot of this, visit our website, visit our social media, call your schools, go visit your schools, make sure that you are you know, clear about what the options are and that you're comfortable with that. So thank you again so much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your uh, day. Enjoy your spring break, which starts tomorrow for Linwood Unified, but you know, make sure you wear a mask. You don't congregate with other households who are not in your own home and, and keep your physical distance. Let's continue being vigilant. Let's take care of each other and, and get vaccinated. Uh, take advantage of our vaccine clinic at Fireball High School Mondays and Wednesdays. We put the links up on social media so that you can take advantage of that vaccine availability. Thank you very much and please take care of yourself. Take care.